Hi, this is Dr. Michael Winters, Winters Wellness, Chiropractic Redefined. I do a talk called Autoimmune Illness, How to Stop Attacking Yourself. But there are some people that can't get there to the talk for various reasons, and I needed to get something on video which explains the five-step process we use for people with autoimmune illnesses. Now, many times people with autoimmune illnesses do need in the beginning, the steroids or the strong immune suppressing drugs and things like that. So there's nothing wrong with the medical model in, when it's needed. But what isn't available for most people is actually a pathway to get healthy. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this video in front of this picture. Most people do not have a path to walk down to actually get healthy with one of these autoimmune illnesses. And that's something that I've developed over the years and I want to share that with you today. Typically, with an autoimmune illness, illness, we get presented with the concept or the thinking process of you just got bad genes, it's kind of your luck of the draw, there's not much you can do about it, so just you just have to take this medication uh, probably the rest of your life and, and hope the medication keeps working. But the best that can happen if that's the, our t total mindset and we adopt that, the best that can happen is symptom control while the underlying damage keeps occurring. But we could realize, we could take on a different mindset that our genes may not so be so bad, they're just unique in how they respond to the environment. And we can take on the mindset that we actually could do something about our genetic expression. There's a field these days called epigenetics, which is how our lifestyle and diet and other things influence our genetic expression. We could also take on the mindset that we could do something about whatever is causing the immune system to overreact. It could be a virus, a parasite, a toxin, something in our environment that's causing the immune system to overreact. And we do have some control over our environment. And so with epigenetics, we do have some control over our genetic expression. So if we take on the belief that we could do something, we could do something positive for ourselves then we can develop an action plan and steps, a road to walk down, and the best that could occur there is actually getting healthy even though you have one of these autoimmune illnesses. So some have seen, I was, my care of a, another doc was written about in the book called Change the Way You Heal, and he was a doc that was totally paralyzed and he was in Lourdes Hospital here in Paducah getting the best in terms of steroids and things like that that were needed and the best care in that, that was needed at the time. But he also wanted somebody to start helping him walk a road to recover and get healthier. And that's what we started advising him on when he was in the hospital and then actually working on him as soon as he got out and working with him over a nine month period and he made a miraculous recovery, went back into practice in California, is there now. You can see his testimonial on, on our, on our uh, Facebook page and our YouTube channels. And he made a miraculous recovery, so much so that last year he ran a 5K. But when he was paralyzed, Vanderbilt University told him that he would never walk again. A few years later, my front desk person who'd been working for me for only a month or so within three days went legally blind with an autoimmune attack on her eyes. And of course she needed the steroids and things at the time, but that wasn't getting her healthy. There was no reassurance that she could actually make a recovery. And so we started digging in and working with her and finding out what was going on with her immune system. And that's part of how I developed these five steps also. And then we've been able to apply that many times with many patients. Some of them have given us testimonials, some are a little shy and haven't given us those, but we have lots of experience in working with these autoimmune illnesses. So I want to share five steps with you here today that are involved in that process. So the first step is to reduce inflammation through diet and repairing the gut. The gut is where our immune system and our environment interact. They collide in our gut. 70 to 80 percent of our immune system is in our gut. So if we're going to get control of a person's inflammation and help their autoimmune illnesses do better, we've got to change their diet. 
we have an anti-inflammatory diet it reduces grains and it reduces sugars which promote inflammation in the body and of course it takes out anti-inflammatory foods like gluten and soy and so on this is critical to reduce this inflammation so that the body can function better and can begin to heal and repair better we see dramatic improvements oftentimes within a month of people just getting on the anti-inflammatory diet then we have to focus on gut repair because when we have a leaky gut when the cells that are lining the gut they're supposed to be tight like this and they open up due to damage that could be due to stress it could be due to anti-inflammatory medications it can be due to parasites, bacteria, viruses, etc. that affect the gut it opens up those one cell lining in our gut and we get what's called a leaky gut now this term leaky gut however you term it, it's not something that's just like a fad thing out there that in my talk I cover exact quotes from different researchers at University of Maryland, University of Illinois, one of the foremost experts on uh, celiac disease in the world, and leaky gut by all those researchers is part of the autoimmune process. They may sometimes use different terms, but oftentimes they will actually use the term leaky gut. So this isn't some out there theory. When we get a leaky gut, things get into the immune system before they should, and the immune system is forced to deal with that. It has to deal with it way before we're prepared to. And as a consequence, the immune system can really get out of balance easily with that. So we have to begin to repair the gut. And there's many steps that we can take in that process. And we often check people with a stool test for hidden gut infections such as H. pylori, a bacterial infection in the stomach. Most of the cases of psoriasis that I've seen, for example, have H. pylori infections in their stomach. Very common. There's also research evidence on, uh, for example, platelet disorders and protozoan or microscopic parasites in the gut. And we can just see this on and on and on. So get control of inflammation through diet and through gut repair. That's step one that we take. Step two that we take is to help balance the immune system. Now in my talk I go through specific ways that the immune system works, but just, just to give you a brief outline here, there's an important balance between the killer cells whose job it is to kill stuff, da -da -da -da, like a machine gun, they're gonna take out things that, need, that don't belong in our in our bodies and kill them. Those are the natural killer cells. There's also antibody cells. Antibodies are like detectives. They come along and say their job is not to kill stuff, but their job is to tag stuff and say that's a bad guy. This is a good guy. Leave him alone. This is a bad guy. Take him out when you when those natural killer cells come by. So there's an immune balance. It's called Th1 killer cells, Th2 antibodies. There is a balance between that. So many organ-specific autoimmune diseases such as multiple sclerosis, Hashimoto's thyroid, etc. are heavy on the Th1 side, the natural killer side. And for those people to balance their immune system or teeter-totter, they need to take things like resveratrol or green tea or curcumin or pine bark extracts, things like that to balance that teeter-totter. If the teeter-totter is tipped the other way and the natural killer cells need to be strengthened, those people need, may need to take things like medicinal mushrooms, zinc, uh, echinacea, things like that to balance the teeter-totter back. The teeter-totter shifts during pregnancy. The Th1 cells go down so the baby is not damaged by the mother's immune system and then after pregnancy it swings back. That's why a lot of autoimmune problems start after pregnancy. So we have to make sure that the person is taking the right nutrition to start to balance that teeter-totter and stabilize it. Now one of the stabilizers also is vitamin D. So if your vitamin D levels are low, it's really critical that we get those up. 
because those affect what are called T regulatory cells and the T regulatory cells help stabilize the whole immune system. They keep the natural killer cells from getting out of balance and they keep the antibody cells from getting out of balance. So vitamin D is hugely important. So that's step two. Step three is to find the antigen that your immune system is reacting to. Antigen is just a big doctor term for something that doesn't belong in your body. Viruses, parasites, bacterial infections, toxins such as heavy metals or plastics and things like that called xenobiotics. Those are common antigens that your immune system is overreacting to. Those antigens may be attached to certain cells in the body such as the thyroid cells which have of course a huge blood circulation in the body so it's one of the places that autoimmunity often shows up first. Those toxins or bacteria viruses may be attached to thyroid cells as the immune system goes after the bacteria or the virus, the thyroid cells get attacked in the process. Or a toxin, for example, could change the structure of certain cells in your body and then your immune system sees that structure as foreign and goes in to attack it. Those are some of the ways that autoimmunity can occur. There's also something called molecular mimicry and so the more stresses that we have on our immune system the more likely it is that the immune system fails to distinguish between what's good and what's bad. So there's, in our talk we show how similar E. coli is in our gut, normal bacteria to myelin basic protein, the sheath around our nerves. When we get a lot of immune stresses it's easy for the immune system to confuse that and attack myelin when it meant to be attacking E. coli. Now, that's called molecular mimicry. But however we look at it, there is an antigen causing your immune system to overreact. When we find that antigen and begin removing that antigen from the body, that's when the really long-term stuff starts to heal and calm down with autoimmune illnesses. Sometimes that antigen is toxins like mercury. I can think of a lady that she was constantly given different doses of medication every month for an autoimmune hyperthyroid. Once we started de determined that the antigen for her was mercury, we got her in with a biological dentist, got some leaking amalgams taken care of, and we started a slow gentle detoxification process for mercury, she has never since that point, and it's well over a year, about a year and a half now, she's never needed the hyperthyroid medication again, even though I insisted she continue monitoring with her uh, physician for that. So we see, for example, Hashimoto's thyroid can be correlated with certain viruses or certain bacteria that the immune system may be overreacting to and again once we help the person deal with a virus or bacteria or whatever it is the immune system can calm down so that is step three remove the antigen and allow the immune system to calm down step four is to reduce the stress response step four is critical because we can't heal in a fight-or-flight mode you've heard of that we need to be more in a rest and repair and relaxation mode to heal properly. So many times if we're stuck in fight or flight, we need to calm that down. Also, there's a balance between the left brain and the right brain. You've heard that the left brain does different things than the right brain. One of the things that the right brain does is suppress immunity, meaning turn off the immune response. So if the right brain is much weaker than the left brain, it won't be able to turn off the immune system appropriately. So we may do things to help give input to the right brain so it can get stronger and be easier to turn off the immune system. We also use something called neurofeedback which takes sensors on your scalp and does mathematics on your brainwave activity and gives you feedback in terms of what your brain is doing and you're just listening to relaxing music but you hear slight interruptions in the sound that your brain begins to learn from and your brain learns to become more efficient and more effective and that certainly can calm the stress response and calm the imbalance of the right and left brain and help the body 
heal faster and easier. So that's calming the stress response. There's also evidence that we want to work with any stressful emotions as well because there's evidence that people with major childhood traumas have more autoimmunity later in life and I cite the published uh, research on that in my talk. That's step four. So step five is to improve genetic expression. Again, we do have the genes we're born with, but how those genes express themselves determines a lot from lifestyle and from diet. If you think of a butterfly, for example, a butterfly is in different stages of life from a cocoon to, to a butterfly. It's the same genetics, but there's different life stages. And I've got a couple of diagrams I had in my hand here. We do this talk straight from, straight from uh, no editing here. And so a butterfly could be from a caterpillar to a butterfly, but there's different, different stages be, because of the epigenetics, the outside influences on that. Now, what I did not put in my picture here was on one of my talks, I showed two mice, one with a beautiful fur coat and one with an ugly fur coat and a, that's much more obese. Those mice actually have the same genetics. This is from researchers at Baylor and other places. The one with the poor looking coat was not given any methyl groups. The one with a good looking coat was giving things like folic acid, certain B12s, and so on that helped the expression of those genetics do better. There's testing that we can do now on your genetics called 23andMe and we can figure out what nutritional supplements are you might benefit from most based on your genetic weaknesses. So we can improve the genetic expression through lifestyle and through specific supplements based on your genetics. So these are five steps, five steps that people have a path to actually walk down to get healthy with an autoimmune illness. Again, I'm going to review them very quickly here. One is improved diet through uh, supplementation and gut repair to decrease inflammation. Two is to balance the immune system between the killer cells and the antibodies. Three is to find the antigen, the substance, the toxin, the parasite, the virus, the bacteria that the, the immune system is overreacting to and remove that. Four is to improve the stress response Five is to improve genetic expression. So these are the five steps in the Winter's Model for dealing with autoimmunity. I want to thank you for your time today. I want you to be sure to watch the other videos that we have on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. And it's something I'm really passionate about and I love helping people get healthier with autoimmune illnesses. So again, this is Dr. Michael Winters, Winters Wellness, Chiropractic Redefined.